so let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kevin Henfeld. Um, I'm the CEO of a company um, in Malaysia, people to project and I'm also the CEO of Bridget Africa, a project management outfit uh, in Malaysia. Uh, South Africa, we've been operating for the last nine years and in uh, Malaysia, the last three years and uh, been very successful uh, in terms of the businesses so far. Even during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, we've had great clients that have been supporting us and obviously are supporting our clients as well. So we're gonna look at the five guerrilla tactics all right, as I said, I've been a soldier for quite a while, many, many years ago, back in the 80s. Um, it was a very, very important part of my life, something that I cherish and something that I bring to business. And we're going to take these five guerrilla tactics. We're going to use the marketing uh, guerrilla tactics as a base. And we're going to take these tactics and we're going to look at how can we apply them to business in this new normal um, that we're all talking about. And I tell you what, as Kevin sitting here talking to you, I wish that the old normal was back. And you know, I'm 50 years old today, and um, maybe I'm, I'm adverse to change management or whatever the case may be, or change in life. And I just want to go back to the way that it was. But guess what? There's reality in life. I'm an owner of two businesses, and I feed many, many people. You know, every time you employ somebody, there's three or four people that depend on that individual. So I look after a lot of people. So I have to change as an individual. And I've experienced so much in my life. And I've had to change so many times in my life. So even at my age, um, I've changed. And everything that I've done in my business from a virtual training and all those good things, um, I've had to do literally in three weeks. Okay, so it's the five guerrilla tactics. Okay, so we're going to move on. And we're going to look at the objectives of the session. So um, it's our business survival kit that I'm going to be giving you. And we're going to have a look at the, okay. um, we're going to focus our attention on the identifying five guerrilla tactics in terms of business. And if you look at that interesting saying there, business is a combination of war and sport. Okay, so you know, we're having to survive as business people and we're having to be extremely tactical in terms of what we're doing. All right, once we understand these five um, tactics, we're then going to see, well, how do we bring them back into business? Because there's a direct relationship. And please, those of you that have just joined, there's a sneaky thing in all of the pictures. If you spot it, remember it. And right at the end, that's going to be the basis of the question that I'm going to ask and the PMP prize that you are going to win. Okay, so we are now going to go into a poll, ladies and gentlemen. And as I explained earlier, um, you are going to be posed with a question. And you are going to select six different elements that are up in front of you there now. Okay, you're going to choose one of them. And you're only allowed... To choose one a you are a guerrilla warfare dude and you are stuck in this Namib desert and you'll see there's the question up in front of you now you cannot stay where you are there's the enemies after you and you, you cannot stay there because you're gonna die you, your, your, your resources are limited and, and business is the same we we don't have enough resources but anyway you need to get out of there and what you have is one liter of water you have a parachute you have a pistol with nine bullets you've got a bottle of salt pills got about 20 or 30 salt pills in it the car that you've been driving it's a jeep it's a four by four you've got all the car parts to your disposal and you've got eight chocolate bars now i'm going to give you one minute i want you to have a look at this i want you to think of what would you need when you leave the um, spot where you are to survive to get out of this place what are you going to choose and i want you to type your answer in the chat box and your time starts now go okay looking good Looking good. Okay, check box, check box. 
Okay, if there's anything you want to ask, okay, I see the polls going up nicely. I see Waters winning. Waters winning at the moment. Car parts, car parts a second. Parachute is uh, on a, in a close third. Uh, Waters uh, pulling ahead. You still got 20 seconds. Soul Pulls has not started out of the gates. Pistol with nine bullets hasn't started out of the gate. Eight chocolate bars. He's like, they still haven't started out. Up oh, there, Waters pulled ahead. Waters uh, uh, winning the race at the moment. You've got 10 seconds left. Parachute still in second place. Hasn't made any headway. Car parts still second. Uh, pistol now nine parachute. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. We are now going to look at the results. Can you all see the results? Type in your chat box, yes, or uh, yep. put a Y or an N. Okay, we got somebody that says, which desert sells chocolates? Okay. Um, well, look, they were in the back of the car with you. Your wife gave them to you. Okay, like my wife does. Okay. So, the majority have selected water. I'm going to now go out of the poll. Okay, you've all seen the results. We can go out. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, now we're going to go and have a look at the answer. Now, remember, it's all about strategic thinking. All right, so we're going to go to the next slide and we're going to have a look at actually what is the thing that's going to make you survive. All right. Okay. And it's a car door, ladies and gentlemen. It's a car door. It's not the water. It's not all of the other things. Remember I said to you that you've got the Jeep at your disposal, the 4x4. So I would take the car door. Now in the chat box, anybody type, why do you think Kevin would take the car door? I'll give you uh, 20 seconds. Anybody, any idea why I would take the car door? Okay, waiting for you. Anybody? First person that comes up. Why would Kevin take the car door? Type in your chat. Okay, shelter, durable for the shade, as a shield. Okay, all right, thank you for that. And uh, I like the innovative thinking. Well, the reason I would take the door, the, in the desert it's very hot, obviously. So when I'm walking, I want to be able to roll down the window to get some air um, on myself. So that is why I would take the car door with me. Now, that's why business is all about thinking out of the box. And I would obviously use the car door for many, many other things. Okay, I hope you're all laughing a little bit. In the chat box, put a Y if you thought that was funny, because that's not the true answer. The answer's coming now. Okay, we've got a ha, 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 wah, ha, ha, ha. That's obviously the ladies from South Africa. All right, okay, the answer is as follows. And uh, it came in second place, is the parachute. Now, on that picture, remember I said spot the spot? Spot the spot's there somewhere. Watch it. Look for it. Okay, why would we take a parachute from a survival perspective? Well, in the daytime when it's hot, I can use it as a cover. And I can fold it up into three sections. And it will protect me from the elements, the heat. And at night time, I can dig, dig a trough like this in the sand. I've actually done it myself. We can layer it in and it will collect, collect the moisture. You must probably get about 300 milliliters of water in the morning um, and, and, and that will help you survive. So that is your best bet um, in terms of your survival. Okay, so a little bit of a giggle around that one and well done on the poll and we are going to move on. Okay, so if we look at um, our guerrilla tactics, there are five of them, ladies and gentlemen, as I explained. And now we are going to look at Guerrilla tactic number one. Now remember, we are looking at the tactic from a guerrilla perspective and then we're going to translate it back into business. We're going to create the association. So, number one, bring in the enemy's resistance without fighting. In business and in guerrilla tactics, you don't want to fight. That's not the point. Okay, what you want to do is you want to take things over. Okay, with the least amount of force and from a guerrilla tactic perspective it's all around stealth it's all around surprises but you've got to understand your enemy which we're going to talk about now so now let's take that and bring it into business okay so business tactics so we've got gt now we've got bt and remember to look for spot the spots and there's another one in this picture okay so what we need to do as business owners and entrepreneurs we need to identify the winners that will make us beat the competitors. 
what we've got to do, ladies and gentlemen, and listen to me carefully. Listen to me very carefully. We've got to interrogate and spy on our competitors. We have to look at what we can bring to the market that is totally different. And that's what a winner is. Now, if you look at that picture in front of you now, that's Starbucks. Now, why is Starbucks different? Why is Starbucks unique? They're not the cheapest coffee out there on the market. But what have they done? They've created a brand that changes continuously. They've got new drinks. They're moving into milkshakes. They've been very inventive. Um, it's common. Uh, it's categorized across the world. But what, what they've done is, and it's, a, a, and it's a really a true winner, is that they've got all the stuff you can buy in the shop. So now you can buy mugs and you can buy clocks and you can buy um, all sorts of nice odds and ends. Now, my wife has got a major collection of Starbucks. She orders Starbucks every single morning that gets delivered at our house. Okay, she's hooked on Starbucks. Yes, we can drink any coffee, but she's hooked on Starbucks. She might be hooked on coffee, yes, we give that uh, grace, but she's hooked on Starbucks and, and she's willing to pay that price. Even during the hardships now that everybody's going through, she's still willing to spend money on that brand. Why? Because it is different. It's got status and it's got brand association. So we've got to look for those differentiators that are out there. Okay. Guerrilla tactic number two. All right. Now, guerrilla tactic number two is know your enemy and know yourself. You need to know where your strengths lie as a business and you need to know where your strengths of your enemies lie. Now, remember we're talking guerrilla tactics. You, you've got to go and fight the battles you can win. Don't go and fight the battles you're going to lose. If you are going to do that, be prepared for casualties. And I've run many businesses uh, in my life around the world. And sometimes there are sacrifices that you need to make. And I think a lot of organizations today, the, the competitive market has, 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 has moved so quickly. Even in my business, um, I've had to change very quickly. I'm watching all of my enemies. So... The business tactic, all right, is spy on your competitors. Now, I want a little chat, chatbot uh, text in there. A why or a no? A why or an N? Okay, yes or no? Who knows that gentleman that's in the picture? Raymond Ackerman. Has anybody ever heard of Raymond Ackerman? Put a yes or a no in your chat box, please. And while you're doing that, I want you to look for the spot the spot. Okay, yes, no, yes, 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 no. All right, okay. Let me tell you who Raymond Ackerman is. Now, Raymond Ackerman started a supermarket, one, one supermarket, all right, and um, called Pick and Pay. Now, Pick and Pay is like your Jaya Grocery. It's like your giant um, in Malaysia. So he started this small little um, shop of his. And in his, in his mind, his strategy was to grow um, this into South Africa and then take it up into the rest of Africa. And you know what he did? He spent 90% of his time in his competitor shops. He was looking exactly where his competitors were packing things on the shelves. He was watching how friendly the people at the tools were to the um, patrons in the shop. He was looking at the cleanliness of the shop. He was looking at the types of shelves that have been using. He went, he looked at the butchery, how things were being packed. So 90% of his time was spying on his competitors. And if you look at the baby and the bottle and the glass of wine, what he started experimenting in pick and pay, and that's the biggest uh, um, supermarket chain in, in Africa, is he started associating and blending um, products on the shelves and the one thing that, that's part of his case study is he put the wine and the nappies together and that's weird because you wouldn't see that is it and based on his research a lot of times wives are saying to the husband coming back from work babies at home and we've run out of nappies quickly run to the shop and get some more nappies husband is quite stressed out knows that mommy's quite stressed out and we might buy a bottle of wine and in his book, he talks about his wine sales went up by 13% just by positioning stock on the shelves. Why? He watched his competitors and he beat his competitors. 
Raymond Ackerman and Pick and Pay today, they are a supermarket, but they're actually a bank. He's got a strategy that when you put your stock on the shelf, you rent the, the, the shelf space from him as a provider. You put your stock on the shelf, you need to make sure that it's replenished and he pays you in 90 days. So what is he doing? All he is, his business is all about renting space. That's it. He's in the space retail business and he's a bank. He is a bank. And now you can draw money, you can pay your bills at the tools in pick and pay. Why? Because this guy understands his competitors. Like Gorilla War, if you're going to go into a battle, know what you're heading for, because otherwise you're going to get yourself into trouble. Okay, so we're going to move on. Now, if we look at this picture, I want you to type in your chat box, okay, what do you see? What are you seeing in the chat box? What are you seeing there, ladies and gentlemen? And I want you to type it in your chat box now. Okay, standing on ice, cold feet, cool feet, walking on ice, ice cold feet. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for that. Now, this picture from a business perspective and from a guerrilla warfare, when you have committed, don't get cold feet. Because your competitors are going to see you having cold feet and retracting and changing your position too much. Yes, we have to react to changes, but when you've committed in business, don't get cold feet because your staff and your competitors are, competitors are going to see that. Okay, so uh, well done on uh, your, uh, um, your walking on ice and cold feet there. You got close. Remember that picture, when you commit, don't get cold feet. Okay, the next slide that we're going to look at, guerrilla tactic number three, outthink your enemy and outfight them or then outfight them so again this comes down to fight the battles that you can win in business don't try and do everything all the time don't think that you um, Kevin's uh, little uh, cafe on the corner selling milk and wanted to wanting to be a Raymond Ackerman um, in the next year you've got to be smart you've got to be specific you got to make things measurable, you got to make things attainable, and you got to make things tangible, and you got to make things time-bound, um, systematic. So you got to think extremely strategically. So in terms of that guerrilla tactic, our business tactic, and you, you're most probably going to get shocked at this one, is you must headhunt their clients and their great people. Your, your, your staff, where are you going to get the best people from? You're going to get them from your clients. You're going to get them from your competitors. And a lot of people look at me and go, that's not fair. You can't do that. Well, I'll tell you what, if I headhunt a good resource or a good person from a competitor or a client from mine, they pay all the bills. I don't have to pay the bills again. Plus, they know all the secrets and recipes. And that sounds a bit weird. And I know you're thinking, but how can you run a business like it? Guess what? It's fair business. So in guerrilla warfare, if I can get the enemy on my side, what a pleasure. They'll tell me everything that I need to know. So, what does that picture tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of what I've just told you now, the business tactic? What does that picture tell me? Go to your chat, uh, chat box and go and type in. What do you see in there? Everybody go. Chat box, what do you see? Okay, standing on feet. Stepping on toes, teamwork, <laughs> teamwork, that's very creative, stepping on toes. Okay, again, well done. When you do this, don't go and headhunt people from your best clients. Just reputationally, that ain't a good thing to do at all. Okay, so you've got to position yourself strategically. Don't go and steal people from your clients, that's bad news. But don't take good people away from the competitors. Because I tell you what, those people are also watching your resources. So it's this, it's this balance between looking after my own people, headhunting somebody else's people, knowing that my competitors are headhunting my people, and how do I balance this? Because remember, 
your enemy, who's your competitors now from a guerrilla tactic perspective, they're playing the same game if they know what if well if they know what they're doing. So you've got to be on your toes all the time. But don't step on your client's toes, please. Okay. So our next slide that we're going to look at or and tactic. Go. All right, I hope you saw spot the spot there. We'll leave that for a little bit just now. All right, guerrilla tactic number four. The enemy must think you are far when you are near. And when you are near, they must think you are far. Okay, now what, what does this mean, Chris? All right, surprise your competitor with stunning marketing, be striking, be everywhere, and be super confident. Now, all of you on this webinar now, and I sent it on the DLC 3.0 um, uh, chat group, is guerrilla marketing. The very, very cheap and nasty ways that you can get your brand out there and make your competitors think. Now remember, um, and I'm talking from Kevin as a businessman here, is having a reputation is the best thing. And even if it's good or it's bad, as long as you've got a reputation, because you're recognized. Okay, now if we look at Coca-Cola, what did Coca-Cola do? Look at what's happening with Facebook and TikTok now. They're under major threat because they made the wrong moves. They most probably made the, the wrong decisions. Maybe they had the wrong advice from a business perspective. But what did Coca-Cola do? I want you to go into the chat box and I want you to go and type in there. What has Coca-Cola done differently in the last year? Go and type it in your chat box. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Go. What has Coca-Cola done differently in the last year? Okay, branding has changed, yes. Anything else? You are allowed to type. This is called an engaging session. Okay, they also brought out new options like Coke Zero, uh, better branding. Okay, diversified. So, well done ladies and gentlemen. You are 100% correct. All of those are right. Why? They had bad publicity around so many spoons of sugar, 17 uh, spoons of sugar in uh, 350 uh, milliliters of coke. Oh, that, that's not good. Uh, uh, you know, people are so health conscious and all of these good things. But they couldn't stop their business. They're the most popular brand in the world. So what did they do? They had to diversify within the product range. They didn't start making cars and airplanes. They stuck to their knitting. They stuck to what they do well. They diversified. And you know what they did? They went and bought competitors. They bought their competitors out and they bought the value chain out. They bought the, the logistics companies that move their product around. They consumed them as well. So what did they do? They gained territory. Is everybody buying Coke today and still drinking Coke? Their sales have increased by 13%. I drink Coke. I collect Coke bottles. Like Starbucks, I actually collect their product okay so that was business tactic number four we are now going into guerrilla tactic number five but before we go there what does this picture tell you i want you to type in your chat box i'm giving you 30 seconds what does this picture tell you type it in your chat chat box okay everybody type in your chat box what is oh great so we've got a blue face well done all right, what else do we have? Everybody, please type. We've got information because you've seen the ad sign. Yes, well done. Well, you've seen Facebook. Great, I like that. Oh, uh, blue in the face and again a blue face. All right, talking using SOCMED. Okay, well, that's a new word that I've learned anyway. Uh, excuse me, I don't know what that is. Maybe I'll do something new that I need to bring to my business. Social media. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of business tactic, and that competitive advantage, that, that looking at new products, innovating continuously. Do it until you are blue in the face. Never stop innovating. All of you that have studied marketing and business all know the curve, product curve. It starts at that and it starts doing this. And just before you get to the peak, you must have introduced a new product. In my business and in life today, you need to be looking at launching a new product, a service, uh, a result between three and six months. Even if it's a small branding campaign, even if it's a tweet to a product, a new service, a new advert, 
every three to six months, you've got to be changing. You've got to be uh, diversifying. Okay, so business tactic uh, um, that you need to take forward. Our last guerrilla tactic, remember we're looking at five against the objectives of understanding and being able to understand these uh, objectives and then applying them in a business sense. Well, I hope you spotted, spot the spots. Okay, so guerrilla tactic number five. Avoid what is strong and strike on what is weak. Okay, you don't want to go and fight the battles that you're not going to win and I've mentioned that a couple, couple of times. Fight the battles that you can win strategically. Select where you know you're going to be successful. Don't go and spend all of your time and all of your resources fighting battles that you're going to lose. Stuff that is most probably out of your control. Don't go and mess. Go and do the things that are going to make a difference and where you know you're going to win the battle to be successful. So, what are the business tactics? Focus on new products and new way of working. Okay. Now, the next picture that's going to come up, I want you to write in the chat box, what do you see there? Everybody, write in that chat box, what do you see on that picture? Everybody engage. Okay, what do you see there? COVID plotting, statistics, yes. A heat map, yes. Okay. So what are we seeing here, ladies and gentlemen? And thank you. You're correct. And spot the spot is there as well. I hope you're seeing spot the spot for the PMP. Information is power. And uh, data is power. We've got to use data in a clever sense. So as small businesses, in terms of setting ourselves up to fight the battles that we can win, we need to have intelligence. We need to understand what those competitors are doing. We need to know what our clients are doing. We need to know are our clients buying other companies E2C that we can capitalize. So we need the statistics. Because if you look at the world today in terms of COVID-19, we all, we, we, nobody believes any of the statistics anymore. We, we don't even know what the truth is. Now, how are you going to make a business decision if, if you're unsure, if you don't trust the information that you have? And we're going to play a little exercise to actually prove it now. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to read what's up on the slide. Okay, I'm going to be allocating you into a breakaway room with teammates on this webinar. Okay, a breakaway room in Zoom is a virtual room. Like when you're on a facilitation course or a training course, um, you get put into uh, separate rooms to do some exercises. This is exactly the same. You're going to meet some new mates in your uh, breakaway rooms. Okay. Now, in your groups, what I want you to do is identify one product or service or services that you could supply to the market during the COVID-19 pandemic now. Okay. We've seen all sorts of things on the market, stuff that was never there on the market now. And you can enhance a current product that's on the market now. You don't have to invent a new one. Okay. You can invent a new one as part of this exercise and or we can enhance a current product. You've got five minutes. So I'm going to be counting down the time. I'm going to come and visit you in your uh, rooms to complete the exercise. Okay. So I'm going to be splitting you up into the rooms now. But before I do, I'm going to give you the proper job instruction again. You're going to go into rooms with each other, with mates that you know or don't know. You've got five minutes. You need to look at COVID-19. You need to look at the products that are out there now. And what would you do as a business from an innovation perspective to go and make more money out there and to beat all of the competitors that are out there? A new product or an enhancement to a new product? I'm letting you go now and I want you to go into your rooms and I'll see you back in five minutes. Enjoy. Okay. All right. Everybody back. Everybody, let's just clarify, put a Y in the chat box, please. I want to make sure everybody's back. Put a Y. Come, it's called participation. You need to put, yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Team number one, Yolanda, you win team number one. Type in the chat box, what is your product we take into market? Yolanda, all the way from South Africa. 
What product are we taking to market? Hang on, Claire. Hi. Hi. All right. Virtual goggles to enhance meetings. Virtual goggles <laughs> to enhance meetings. Okay. Um, Yolanda, in um, a quick phrase, what is the value virtual goggles are going to give to us? What value? Quickly type. What value of virtual goggles? Imagine seeing virtual goggles. I'm trying to picture virtual goggles. Sounds very interesting if I'm going. Oh, a more personal experience. Oh, I get this now. Okay. So, all right. They have been chatting to me on the side. I've actually got a, a view of the first uh, drawings. So, it's using your 3D type PlayStation um, virtual goggles um, in a virtual environment, classroom environment like this. Where you're actually having pens in your hand and writing on um, pads and so forth. Okay, I could give that one a 8 out of 10. Alright, so um, we, we're leaning towards a winner there. Okay, team number two. Uh, who was in team number two? I uh, can't remember. Uh, Naj, you were in team number two. Or Naj, whichever team you were in, just write the team number and then tell me what is your product. Okay, what is your product? Brilliant, team number one. Well done. <laughs> okay, um, I enhance the spray. Okay. Now, Nash, in terms of enhance the spray, okay, Nash was in team number three. What spray? Uh, if I want to invest in something, I've got to know what I'm investing in. What spray? The sneeze spray? What spray? Okay, type in there. Tell me what's the benefit of this product. Invisible layer of disinfectant spray that you can spray on daily. Okay. So what we're going to do is, um, and I see the drawing coming through here. So it's like a spider's nest, uh, uh, um, a spider web. You spray it, but people can't see it, but it actually forms a bubble around you to avoid the virus. And actually they're saying on the, on the well, eight hours. Okay, so, so it's like a sunscreen. Oh, I get it now. Okay. Well, I think I, I might invest some money in R&D there. Okay. Team number two. So Naj was uh, three. Okay. Num uh, team number two. Driving cinema. If I was you in that team. To bring back outdoor entertainment to people's lives. Oh, okay. Okay, Anand. There we go. So driving cinema. All right. Okay. So, so entertainment. I can sit in a car with my family. I can take the spray product spray it around me so i can be safe in the car so i've got two products that i can use at the same time and if i'm too far away from the uh, movie screen i can put my virtual goggles on okay each of you've got five million we're going to launch three new products into the market okay everybody say yes if you are willing for me to invest money in your products we've got all three products we're going to make them into one total solution put yes put yes 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 i want to see yes awesome 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 Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. All right. Okay, well done, ladies and gentlemen. That was good work. We're almost uh, near the end. Yes, Kevin's invention. Now, those of <laughs> those of you that are not in South uh, in South Africa, in South Africa they banned cigarettes. Uh, you London, correct me if I'm wrong. It's for the last hundred days already. They banned cigarettes. You're not allowed to smoke or you're not allowed to drink. Neither you can't buy alcohol. So, but there is um, the black market for uh, cigarettes and people are selling. So, my design. So, um, after this presentation, I'm going to contact each of you and see if we can bring this product into our product set that we have. So, we've got virtual goggles at the movie houses with a web spray and we can smoke in the car at the same time and nobody. So, now we've got four products we're going to put into one. Okay, well done. I hope you enjoyed the exercise. We're going to move on. All right, okay, so now we're getting to the end, ladies and gentlemen, for the PMP course in September 2020, virtual, 3,000 ringer, 12,000 rand. Did you spot the spots? Now, in the chat box, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I want you to type, what did you see that talks to spot the spots? You've got 30 seconds, go. Ladybug, Ladybug, Blue Hand, I see Kevin all, <laughs> Ladybugs, alright, 
You've got another 20 seconds. So we've got a few ladybugs going there. We've got a few, another ladybug, another ladybug, another ladybug. Okay, so you saw the ladybug all the way through. Now, now, so you, you haven't won the prize yet. Now, in that chat box, ladies and gentlemen, to win the prize, the first person that writes the correct answer wins the PMP course. What do we call many ladybugs living together? Like a herd of cattle, like a herd of elephants. What are many ladybugs that live together? What's the answer? You've got 30 seconds. Type it. Go. Colony, we've got. We've got a colony. I love you. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's it. A swarm, a crew, <laughs> wonderland. Ah, that's cute. All right. Okay, you still got 10 seconds, 10 seconds. I don't see the answer yet. A bunch, a nest. We're not there yet, ladies and gentlemen, a group. Now, in terms of business, be inventive. You've got a phone next to you. Google, quick, quick, quick. Ah, Peter, you got it. Loveliness. Bless the slide. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, a whole lot of ladybirds that live together are called loveliness. All right, so now you can go and teach your kids that. Well done, Peter. Uh, you've won the PMP course. Um, I will uh, get into contact with you and we'll sort you out. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got seven minutes to go. And then my allotted time is up. Now, what I want to do is I want to get a bit serious here. Um, we need to protect our businesses, ladies and gents. Um, COVID-19 has caused major disruptions to all of us. Um, small businesses must stand together. Um, we've got to buy from each other. We've, we, we've, got to, we've got to spend time with each other. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about social distancing. And I think it's the wrong phrasing. We still need to be social. So maybe we should call it physical distancing and take the word social distancing out of it. Because social distancing doesn't sound good to me. Now, physical distancing is okay, I understand that. You know, we're not sneezing on each other and we're wearing our masks and all these good things. But we still, we, we still need to be social and we need to be social in business. I'm going to drop you all, a, all a, a message, those of you that own your own businesses, Let's see how we can support each other. Even if we buy something small, attend a course or something on, on another place. Okay, any questions, ladies and gents, type them in your chat box. Got five minutes to go. And uh, let's go and see if we can help each other out. Yes, physical distance is, is what I use as well. No, we have to. We have to. Absolutely. But how do we socialize? And I'm talking specifically from a business perspective. You know, when we're starting to go back to business and we're sitting far apart from each other, I think the, the, the socializing part um, is still so important. Um, I've had two of my staff that have been living on their own for three months through the COVID-19 uh, thing, and it was tough for them. Any other questions, ladies and gents? We can continue to maintain virtual relationships. Absolutely. This is, we, we are doing it now. We are together and we... We're enjoying ourselves. I'm really enjoying myself. Um, uh, I've got one or two uh, of, of my best friends sitting here next to me. And I've just made a whole lot of new friends out there. So thank you very much for that as well. Okay. In your opinion, are we getting used to the new normal? Or can we get back to the same before COVID? I'm going to give you my view on this. And I think we all chat about it. All of us wish we could go back to where we were. I wish. Like I mentioned earlier. But I think we're getting accustomed to new things. And I think it's a blend. We're going to have to settle with a blend because we can't throw everything away that we've been used to. I mean, from a business, but I still want to do face-to-face -face training. But now I can mix it up. And guess what? I've just seen a whole lot of opportunities mixing it up. So I think it's a blend of what we can't let go of because we're human beings, but we have to change. And it's this whole presentation went about what we need to look at to change. There we've got work from home. Absolutely. <laughs> What a pleasure working from home. I, I, I was talking to somebody as well. I mean, let's, uh, everybody going to yes. I, okay, go to the chat box quickly. 
Do you have to go to your office to work? Yes or no? And we've got three minutes left. Everybody type in that box. Yes or no? Do you have to go to work to do your job? No, no. Yes, yes. No, no. Okay, I've did a quick calculation in my head. Okay, so 85% are saying no. Now, Chiok and uh, Naj, I understand that you need to go to, uh, uh, to work. Uh, I used to work in the mining industry. After climbing a car, I need to go to work. Uh, just to let you know, um, my son works uh, uh, for one of the companies in South Africa. He was diagnosed with COVID-19 yesterday. And a little bit later in the evening, his wife was diagnosed with COVID-19. They're fine. They're doing okay. Um, he said it's about in the 50% um quartile of uh, the worst flus that he's had he's 29 years old but i mean that's how close it is so yeah you know, i don't I, I, we want to work from home but obviously there are certain jobs that we need to um we have to go to work but look how much money we can save those that have said no I mean, we don't have to pay rent we don't have to pay petrol luchelle you do a coding for us you can do two hours worth of coding more in the day than sitting in traffic but we still need to socialize somehow. So again, it comes back to that blend. I think we need to blend things. We still need to go to work, but I think we also need to be virtualized. And we can be virtualized at work as well. All right. Last question, anybody? Last, last, last questions before we say goodbye. Okay. My question to you is, and then I'm going to say goodbye and then we're done. And I want you to type yes or no. If I get into contact with all of you, and the people on VLC 3.0 and 4 that's coming up now. Are we willing to support each other? Are you willing to come on one, one of my courses? I'll give you a discount and I'll come on one of your courses as well. Let's help each other because that's the only way we're going to get through this. And the virtual world has given us an opportunity to all interact with each other. So I think we need to get our butts off our, and I'm sure we all get, got, our, got our butts off the chairs already. Those of us that are here. Um, or doing it, but we need to go and support each other out there. It's, that's, that's the way we're going to do it. And we've got, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. It's a beautiful session with you, Kev. Thank you, Chiok. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, ladies and gents, I've, I think we've uh, we got to the end of the session. I want to thank you for your participation. I hope you enjoyed it. I trust that you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I love training and, and uh, working with people. It has been a little bit different, you know, with this blend. I've had to get used to all of this stuff. Um, yesterday, I was still learning buttons on Zoom, and I just learned another one this morning. So, um, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, I want you all to have a wonderful weekend. Think about what I've spoken to you about, about helping each other. I'm going to get into contact with everybody, and uh, let's, let's help each other out. We have to, we have to. And we, we're a big world. Uh, God bless you all. Have a wonderful time. Those of you that woke up early in South Africa, Yolanda, I really do appreciate it. I'll send you a private message now. Uh, we're going to be doing some work in South Africa together. God bless you guys. Keep well. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you soon.